Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Robert Konopka from Certiza. Uh, Certiza is a yeah, technology provider for OEMs, ODMs. We make an alternative updating technology to the OTA, which is already in Android. We run the updating infrastructure in Europe for, for a few smaller OEMs. And yeah, we are trying to make our customers happy. That's why um, what I'm going to tell you today was a request from, not from, a, from an OEM, it was from an enterprise who wanted to use tablets for their, cust uh, for their employees. And yeah, there are some challenges arise which couldn't be solved with the existing yeah, um, features of, of the Android system. Um, I'm going to tell you the, the, the whole story just to point out how it came to this. Um, it is real, except the names I will tell. <laughs> and yeah, if there are, there are questions, there will be sh for sure a lot of time after my talk um, to, to clear them out. At the beginning, um, yeah, this is, this is Tom. He's just a normal guy. He's not very technical. He's yeah. He's al already using Android devices. He has a phone. He has a tablet. He's he's not flashing custom ROMs or something. He's just just using it, playing games, uh, watching movies, reading the news, email, and so on. He really likes it because Android was originally also designed for private use. It is not an enterprise system, and it really it re it really fits his needs. And yeah, so he likes it. He thinks it's it's good. He can do everything he wants. And yeah, he also has a job. His boss um, also read about all these new mobile devices that they are easy to use. They are smaller than notebooks. They are not so heavy. And he thinks, yeah, maybe we can use it. Um, in our company to improve our processes, to make our employees more happy and he thinks it's a really good idea and he proposes it to Tom. He tells him, yeah, what do you think about it? We can, we can use, instead of notebooks, we can use tablets. It sounds nice and yeah, there are, there are not, 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 as, not this expensive. They are out for many years on the market and they, it seemed to work. Yeah, Tom, Tom thinks about it and thinks, yeah, um, great idea, I like it, um, let's, let's use tablets for, for our, for our um, employees. He already has a phone from the company, he has a private phone, he has a private tablet, and now he's getting a company tablet. And yeah, maybe it does not fit to you, but most people out there do not like to have many devices. They want to have devices, but they say, okay, carrying two phones with me, having a professional tablet, which I take at home, I have a tablet at home, and yeah, when I have a company car, I can also use it for private use. Why can't I use it my phone for private use? Why can't I use my, my tablet, my ni nice flagship tablet, what my company is buying at home? And basically he's right, but there are some differences between cars and, and mobile devices and yeah it's it's not that easy to say okay you get a tablet from the company or a phone do whatever you want with it because there are basically two sides there is the, the enterprise side where um, many things have to be restricted like there is it's not allowed to use the Google Play Store there are some settings which have to be enforced, like using a special proxy for connecting to the internet, using a VPN client. Not all apps are allowed, like games. Um, the CTO would not like it that you, you download APKs from somewhere and just install it into your system and so on. On the other hand, Tom, of course, wants to make photos to, to download movies, to, to, to play games, to give it to his kids. And he does not want to have his photos backed up into the 
company infrastructure. He wants uh, yeah, to have his privacy respected. And also, um, he wants to use the Google Play Store, which is not allowed in this company. So basically, the main challenges are settings, apps, and data have to be separated between these two parts. You don't want your company data in your private space of your employees. You don't want your private data being backed up into the company infrastructure. You do not want to allow your employees to use every app they want. They just are allowed to install the apps you, you have tested and uh, you check there are no viruses, no, no trying horses inside and you want to enforce a few settings. So basically, there are solutions for this or for parts of this problem. Like, there are many mobile device management solutions um, which can restrict the usage of the device, they can enforce some settings as long as they run. They can allow or disallow a few apps which can be installed. They can, yeah, they can, um, or they're trying to protect the data on the device. But if you have seen a setup of a mobile device management solution on an enterprise device, it's not very nice to use it privately because you're not allowed to do anything. This has, uh, the mobile device management solution has to run every time. And yeah, basically it's not very attractive for the, for the consumer to, to have it on, on his device he's using at home. On the other hand, um, you surely r read about virtualization solutions. Many companies announced it and this kind of solutions um, will completely separate these three things. Because you have two independent systems, there is no interference between them and so on. But in this real project there has to be one problem, you cannot buy such a device. You cannot go to, to a shop and say, okay, I, I want a device where I can run a virtualization solution which, is, which seem to be uh, already available for Android. Um, there is no such a thing. On the other hand, Virtualization has an overhead, it's not running very fast, and you have always issues with hardware acceleration and so on. It was not really an option in this scenario. Then you have the so-called container-based uh, solution where you have an app, and inside the apps there are other yeah, widgets, plugins, or uh, other small apps where you can access the company's email and, and some data and so on. But basically, in such a container, yeah, you, you build another operating system. This is not Android anymore. You cannot use third-party apps, um, which, which, which you can buy on the market, and you are locked in into what the supplier of this container solution is providing you. Yeah, there are so-called thin client solutions where yeah, it's like a Citrix client where you stream everything from a, from a server and then use it. Um, this was also no option here because you need permanent internet connection. And if you have field forces um, which are, yeah, uh, which have to go to the customer and don't have permanent internet access, this is not possible to, to, to go here. So, um, yeah, we've been thinking, what can we do? And we really like the virtualization ap approach, but as I told you, um, it was impossible to get the solution running on, on a device, which is suitable for, for the company. And then we thought, okay, what, what would be the next easy way? Um, and it turned out, yeah, why don't to make a dual boot on an Android system? You have two independent systems, so you have complete separation of these three, um, these three important things, and yeah, the, the when the when Tom comes comes to work, he can reboot into the enterprise uh, system and work. When he goes home, he reboots into the private system and could, can do anything with the with the device. He can even give it to his kids, install Angry Birds, and so on, and it's not not interfered. And the enterprise system can be locked down with a mobile management device solution. Um, 
yeah, and and everybody will be happy. And fortunately, um, we developed an interesting technology for Android we are using for our updating system and ROM management. It's, um, yeah, we call it a low footprint container solution. It has nothing to do with the container app solution I showed on the slide before. It's uh, using an interesting feature of the Linux kernel called namespaces, where you can yeah, create process trees which are completely isolated from the rest. They have their own network stack, their own um, process space, they have their own file system. It's like it's like a virtual machine, but it's, it is no virtual machine because there is no hardware emulation. You're still using the, the device hardware. And with this um, technology, you can encapsulate the Android system into one folder. You don't need to work with partitions. This, this folder can be anywhere on a system. So we have been able to buy any device on the market. We bought one from one of the major brands in this project. Um, important is that we have the kernel source codes, that we can recompile the kernel. Of course, we have ro to root the device, but this was no problem in this, in this um, environment. And because um, the customer wanted an own ROM anyway, which we, we should build. And so we, we've been able to create completely separated Android systems, which are lying in a folder on the device. We can even have more than two. There are, we can have as, as many um, complete Android systems as you have space on your uh, data space on your device. It's only limited on, on the storage size. And you can, you can boot one at a time. They are not running at the same time. So you start Android system one when you're at work. You have your mobile device management there. And when you go home, you start system two and you have a completely open free system which does, does not access the data of the first one because he doesn't see it. And yeah, we, we just tried it, we made a demo. If it's working, it worked good. But this rebooting was no problem for this company because a reboot of an Android device takes less than one minute and you don't do it, uh, you do it twice a day maybe. And yeah, that's why we, we choose this solution and at the moment we are implementing it. So basically, um, this dual boot can solve the issue that when you give a device to, a, to your employee, you can allow to use it for private purposes. And at the same time, you can lock down the usage of the professional enterprise system you have on it when he's at work. You can forbid to install any APKs. You can, you can have a completely read-only system if you want, and you can have the second system completely open. This works with every Linux-based system. It's not limited to Android. You can have an Android system and a Firefox OS on the same device if you like, or in Ubuntu or whatever uses a Linux kernel. Um, you have full possibility of changing the, the, the ROMs because it's just, or just files in a folder. You can exchange everything. You can just edit the initRC. You don't have to, f to flash anything. It's just copying. You can have your system even on the SD card or, or anywhere where you, where you want. And of course, um, you have apps, data, settings separated between the systems. You don't have to care about it. You still need a mobile device management solution for the enterprise ROM, of course. This is, this is not um, for the, 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 the management of the device. This is just for separating cleanly the, the, the workspaces. Yeah, and in the end, in, in this project, I hope everybody will be happy so employees can use the device at home, can even give it to their kids to play around and at work they just reboot and use their professional system. We think this is a smart idea to solve the conflict between um, professional and private use of devices. And yeah, that's why we wanted just to, to show it here on DroidCon, this, this possibility of solving it. 
because it's very simple. You have not a very complex um, um, solution, which is very error prone. And yeah, you're just using, just using an Android device in a different way. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And of course, we are, <laughs> we are, we are, uh, we have interesting jobs to offer. If we, we are always looking for people who like to do, yeah, to not go the standard way to find such such solutions where you do something different to solve a problem. And this is what we do every day. And yeah, we hope we can do it for long. Thank you.